Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Sparkle English. My name is Jennifer and today I'm going to teach you about how to use commas before the word and. This is a topic that a lot of people have different opinions on, so I want to do a video that covers when exactly we use commas before the coordinating conjunction and. If you want more videos on how to use commas, make sure to check out my English Writing Essentials playlist, which I will link you to in the description below this video. So let's begin. First of all, we know that we use a comma to split the items in a list of three or more. So for example, mom needs flour, comma, sugar, comma, eggs, comma, and butter to make the cake. Jean studies French, comma, Lauren plays hockey, comma, and Beth rides horses. Stephanie has lived in India, comma, Pakistan, comma, and China. Now you'll note that we have commas after each item in the list. This could be a list of nouns or phrases or adjectives. And note that there is a comma here before the word and. Now this is called the Oxford comma and it technically is optional. I'm going to talk more about when it's important to use the Oxford comma and whether or not you should use it. So the Oxford comma is the final comma in a list of things. It is also known as the serial comma. So this comma right here before the word and is the Oxford comma. Now, if we take it away, it still makes sense. It's very clear that we're talking about four separate items. Let's look at another example. I'm inviting Marie, Zoe, Jake, Carl, and Mark to my birthday party. Again, the Oxford comma doesn't make a big difference here. It's very clear we're talking about five different people. Here's another example. You must proofread, comma, edit, comma, and revise your essays before the deadline on Tuesday. So all of these commas before the word and are Oxford commas. Now let's talk about when using the Oxford comma is important because many people say it's not important. So using the Oxford comma can help prevent misunderstandings. For example, imagine you read this sentence. I would like to thank my parents, comma, Lady Gaga and Elvis. Without a comma before and, this looks like the person is thanking their parents named Lady Gaga and Elvis, and that would mean they are thanking only two people. The comma indicates that these are the names of the person's parents. However, if we use an Oxford comma, I would like to thank my parents, comma, Lady Gaga, comma, and Elvis, that makes it very clear we are talking about three items in a list. My parents, Lady Gaga, and Elvis. So in this case, it's very clear that my parents are not Lady Gaga and Elvis. I'm thanking them in addition to Lady Gaga and Elvis. Well, let's look at another example. You need to feed the cats, Gary and Bobby. In this example, it looks like the person needs to feed the two cats named Gary and Bobby, Gary the cat and Bobby the cat. However, if we use an Oxford comma, you need to feed the cats, comma, Gary, comma, and Bobby, this shows very clearly we are talking about three separate items in this list. You need to feed the cats and the baby Gary and the baby Bobby. So in some cases, using the Oxford comma is very important to prevent misunderstandings. Some people may say, well, you can just change the sentence around. You need to feed Gary, Bobby, and the cats. And this is also true. So is the Oxford comma required? Some style guides require the use of the Oxford comma. However, other style guides do not require its use. So if you're writing an essay or writing for a specific publication, you'll have to follow specific style guidelines regarding the use of the Oxford comma. For example, in the Oxford Style Manual, the Chicago Manual of Style, and the MLA Style Manual, they do require the Oxford comma. So I love cheese, comma, bread, comma, and chocolate. However, in the AP Style Guide, they do not use the Oxford comma. So this would be, I love cheese, comma, bread, and chocolate without a comma before and. Now, even though it's called the Oxford comma, this is not very typically used in England. 
This is more commonly used in North America. But really, the most important thing is to be consistent. If you use the Oxford comma once in your essay or in your article, use it throughout the entire text. Be consistent. Okay, so now let's talk about independent clauses with AND and how we use commas with independent clauses. So we use a comma before the coordinating conjunction AND when it connects to independent clauses. So what is an independent clause? An independent clause is a clause that forms a complete thought. It can stand alone as a sentence. It contains a subject and a predicate. So for example, the teacher prepared an interesting lesson. This is an independent clause. It contains the subject, the teacher, and it contains a predicate. If you want to learn more about independent clauses, I've linked you to a video in the description below this video. So this is an independent clause. And if we combine this independent clause with the coordinating conjunction and, and another independent clause, we have to use a comma before and. So for example, the teacher prepared an interesting lesson and the students loved it. Here we have two independent clauses. The teacher prepared an interesting lesson. The students loved it. So we have to use a comma before and. Here's another example. Beth is going through a hard time and she doesn't need more stress. Again, we have two independent clauses. Beth is going through a hard time. She doesn't need more stress. So we use a comma before and. I'm going back to university and I think I'll study audio engineering. Again, we have two independent clauses joined by the coordinating conjunction and, so we have to use a comma before and. So let's look at some examples when we have independent clauses followed by phrases that are not independent clauses. Beth is going through a hard time and doesn't need more stress. Here we have an independent clause, but doesn't need more stress is not an independent clause. This is a phrase. We don't have a subject. So we do not have a comma before and. If this said, Beth is going through a hard time and she doesn't need more stress, then we would have an independent clause. But because we don't have a subject here before doesn't need, we do not use a comma before and. Here's another example. I'm going back to university and studying audio engineering. Again, we have an independent clause. However, studying audio engineering is a phrase. It is not a standalone sentence. So we don't use a comma before the coordinating conjunction and. Okay, so now we have a seven question comma quiz. Your job is to place commas correctly in the following sentences, if they need commas. Number one, we need to buy a tent, sleeping bags, and a new cooler for our trip. Number two, please put ketchup and mustard on my hot dog. Number three, David won't return my phone calls and I need to speak with him urgently. Number four, it's been a difficult week and I could use some help. Number five, we're going to Egypt next week and need to start packing our bags. Number six, Abdallah prefers to walk to work and always arrives on time. And finally, number seven, Luke and James are going to the cinema and Tyler may join them later. Okay, now it's time to correct these together. So. Number one, we need to add some commas. We need to buy a tent, comma, sleeping bags, comma, and a new cooler for our trip. Remember, after a comma, we always have a space. So this comma before and is the Oxford comma, and again, it is optional. Number two is correct as it is. Please put ketchup and mustard on my hot dog. Here we only have two items, ketchup, mustard, so we don't need to add a comma. We only add commas in a list of three or more. 
Number three, we are missing a comma. David won't return my phone calls, comma, and I need to speak with him urgently. This is because we have two independent clauses. David won't return my phone calls. I need to speak with him urgently. So we use a comma before and to connect two independent clauses. Remember, after the comma, we have a space before and. Number four, we also need to add a comma. It's been a difficult week, comma, and I could use some help. Again, we have two independent clauses connected by the coordinating conjunction and. Number five is correct as it is. We do not use a comma. We're going to Egypt next week is an independent clause. However, need to start packing our bags is a phrase. It's not an independent clause because we don't have a subject. So we don't use a comma. Number six is also correct as it is. Abdullah prefers to walk to work is an independent clause. However, always arrives on time is a phrase. It does not have a subject, so we don't use a comma before and. And finally, number seven, we are missing a comma. Luke and James are going to the cinema, comma, and Tyler may join them later. First, we have Luke and James, but these are only two people, so we don't use a comma before and. And we need to put a comma before and here because we're joining two independent clauses. Luke and James are going to the cinema and Tyler may join them later. Okay, so let me know in the comment section how many you got correct out of seven on this comma quiz. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section of this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more English lessons and check out my full series on English writing essentials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next lesson.